In last week's episode, we talked about video game bosses. Let's see what you had to say. So by pure coincidence, uh, extra credits on the same day that we uploaded the video game bosses episode uh, released a an extra frames about Shadow of the Colossus. So I just wanna make sure that if you haven't seen that, you should go watch it. It's great, and uh, we managed uh, actually to uh, get some remarkably similar looking footage as well. Promise, Dan did not steal my footage. I did not steal any of Dan's. Not that, I mean, not that we know of. M. Avery writes a really interesting comment that I'm gonna kind of stumble my way through <laughs> responding to. Um, so they talk about how there are two different kinds of games maybe, that there are games where you meet difficulty and you struggle with it and you move beyond it and that there are games where you you don't um, or the difficulty that you meet is much more abstract and is not nearly as on the nose challenging as this other kind of difficulty in that, you know, these games you walk, you discover, you appreciate, whatever, but in these games you fight um, and you struggle and you, you level up and you progress. And the metaphor that M. Avery gets to is how this sort of can allow us to think about two different life experiences. That there are these life experiences where you constantly meet difficulty. And I think that when you have had a, a life experience like that, when you are constantly meeting difficulty, and you meet someone, you encounter someone who has mostly had this other experience, where their life experience has been mostly about walking, discovering, appreciating, it can seem hard to relate to them uh, or that you can feel like they maybe just haven't even had uh, a life experience that they've just been sort of wandering around. But what M. Avery was able to get at by thinking about the game version of this life experience, the games themselves and not, and not the lived experience is that these games wouldn't exist if there wasn't a market for them, if people weren't interested in having them um, or experiencing them, playing them for some reason. And so then that might sort of provide a way to relate to the life experience that that must be doing something for this group of people or it must have some value beyond just, yeah, you know, you just kind of live your day to day, you kind of live your life, whatever, blah, 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 um, as opposed to as opposed to what I think can often feel like the more, um, I don't know what the right word is, not righteous, but the more sort of real experience of, of living a life that you are like, you've like really seen some stuff. And I think that this is a really interesting sort of case study in, in how we can use media and not just the stories that are told in that media, but the, the actual media objects themselves to think through the life experiences of other people um, and to use it to think, to sort of think with um, and to show how, how there's, there's more to these things than just, oh yeah, you like walk through a house and you pick up pieces of paper. Um, that, that, that can embody in itself a life experience. I think that this is just, this is such a good comment and I think something I'm gonna be chewing on for a while and I, you know. I would suggest you do too. Kirby Master 5 asks a really interesting question about Shadow of the Colossus, which is essentially that if everything is a boss, isn't nothing a boss? And I think that uh, this, I think, kind of assumes maybe a very insular experience of video games, that that may be true if the only game that you've ever played is Shadow of the Colossus, um, but that the way, or the, the, yeah, the way that Shadow of the Colossus works, how it imparts the meaning that it does, is that the Colossi themselves appear as though they are what we would call a boss in any other game, and so that what's, that's what makes them the momentous occasion that they are, even though you kind of only ever meet momentous occasions. Unless you, you know, I'm assuming that for most people, riding your horse across the countryside is not a momentous occasion, but maybe it is. Uh, but there is, there is, I think, a really interesting point to be made about whether or not the environment itself is in some way a, uh, like, a minion. Uh, and that was a, a great conversation that happened 
um, in the comments. Uh, so this inspired a great a great thread. Highly recommend checking it out. Emily from The Brain Scoop talks about, also, hi, Emily, nice to see you, uh, talks about how she avoids playing games that have bosses um, and has for quite a while and wonders whether or not this has something to do with her avoidance of a conflict in real life. And I would be really interested to know, like, if there's a study for this, if people have sort of looked at um, direct confrontation as embodied by a video game boss and how that relates to people's uh, um, opinions of or the ways that they deal with direct confrontation in, you know, the not, the not gaming parts of their lives. Uh, but I will say that when I was younger, I definitely felt the same way and did a lot of the same things. I remember, I think I restarted Super Metroid, which at this point is now one of my favorite games of all time, probably seven times because the bosses just stressed me out so much, I could not deal with it. Pultus B gets to one of the things I was really hoping that someone would, would talk about and a thing that didn't make it into the episode, which is The Witness and how there can be boss style puzzles in a puzzle game. And um, I wanna make sure I get their name right. Uh, Tariq, Tariq Sharif um, says exactly what I would say, which is brings up the challenge from The Witness, which to me is like the paradigmatic uh, boss puzzle, with maybe the exception of the fact that, uh, maybe the exception that you don't have to beat it in order to like progress to the end of the game, that like the game ends, and then you have the option of challenging yourself with the challenge, but man, yes, yeah, yes, boss puzzle. Robot Priest, your comment made me think about who the um, boss bosses of other areas of the arts may be, and without getting too mired in the like, what is the Dark Souls of X, right? Because that's got a very specific thing about it. Made a whole video about it. Um, you know, like who, like who are the bosses of painting? You know, like who's the, like who are the, who are, the, where are the boss battles in sculpture? I'm gonna say, respectively. Maybe, maybe Cy Twombly for painting, Joseph Boyce for sculpture, maybe Anselm Kiefer. On the topic of video games without what we would normally call a boss, um, Clayton O talks about how uh, Gone Home specifically at least is maybe kind of a, a boss-like experience as a whole. And this I think is pretty close to what I would say that I think a lot of these games that don't necessarily have aggressors are boss-like in that they still require you to um, switch up your strategy, like look at the environment in a different way. It's just the strategy that you're switching up is how, how you play games and the environment that they're asking you to look at differently is the environment of media or, um, you know, game-related meaning, um, you know, ludic, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that, you know, y you get actually a fair amount of self-knowledge from these experiences um, once you are able to kind of invest yourself in the way that those games expect of you, which can, can often be very, very difficult, can be, you know, as difficult <laughs> as a very difficult boss fight in, say, Dark Souls. It's just a very different kind of difficulty. Sheepman talks a little bit more abstractly about narrative moments as um, encounters that might resemble something like a boss fight. And I really like this. And they talk about, you know, this moment in Dear Esther where you enter into a cave for the first time and there's a sense that something has happened. There's something that you should be aware of. There's some uh, like appreciable facet of the environment that's not immediately clear. And so maybe it's worth it to kind of just sit there and soak it up for a little while. And I think that that is another really great way of finding the boss like in a bossless game that the game can can challenge you to do exactly the opposite of what it's asking you to do. It's a walking simulator. All you do, you walk around in the game, but then it challenges you to just sit for a second, just stay and watch 
think about where you are and think about the meaning that the environment is trying to impart to you. And I think that that's, that's also a, another really great way to look at this. Slow Wolf Gaming wrote a really great blog post in response to the episode that I highly recommend you check out. We'll put a link to that in the description. Kuika P on the subreddit writes a really great comment about how in games like The Stanley Parable, which is just, man, that's a great game to talk about with regards to boss fights and the boss fight like, um, that with games like The Stanley Parable or Gone Home or Dear Esther, a lot of times you can you can look at the developer themselves as the boss. And I really love this, and I love imagining Davey, the developer of The Stanley Parable and The Beginner's Guide, as the sort of the, the aggressor that is forcing me to have some kind of introspective self-experience. And that it's just, that's very accurate. That's just very accurate. In response, Kaida Squid talks about how another way to find the the bossness of these kinds of games is in their supporting material, and talks specifically about the wikia um, of certain games and trying to make sure that you've seen everything, that you know everything, that you've you've sort of um, you've stepped foot in all of the individual corners. And I think that this is this is a really interesting interesting way to, to look at bossness, and I think locates it in a really meaningful way in yourself, because you, you for yourself, want to make sure that you have seen everything. So that's, that's a nice idea. James Ike writes a really great comment on the Idea Channel Facebook um, about whether or not you can really say self-literacy is an aspect of bosses and boss fights, and uh, I just want to point this out to say it's a great comment. You should go read it. Links to this one and all the others in the doobly-doo. Don't rob me. We will make a video about Pokemon Go at precisely the moment that the hype is over.